Chapter 5 Odd Numbered Problems. Number 1. What information is provided by the sign, positive, negative, of a z-score? Also, what information is provided by the numerical value of these z-scores? So from our reading, we've learned that um, z-scores indicate, on average, right, the values above the mean and below. And normally, we will capture the majority of any distribution one three standard deviation units above and below the mean of a distribution. So when we identify the sign, the sign indicates if a score is above that would be a positive z-score, or below negative z-score, the mean. So again, the sign is just simply telling us, are we referring to an x value above the mean or below? Above would have a positive z-score, values below the mean would have a negative z-score. Next, the information that is provided by the, the numeric value of the z-score simply tells us how many standard deviation units that score is from the mean. So the numeric value value indicates how many standard deviations a score is from the mean. So both of these together give us a sense of the location of a particular score. Are we talking about a score that's above the mean or below the mean? In addition to that, the actual z value will tell us how many standard deviation units a score is from the mean. So just for, for instance, if we were to look at look at a distribution and let's say the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is equal to 10 points right if we went out one standard deviation unit if we went one standard deviation unit above the mean that would give us a score of 110 and we would understand that um, as a z score of positive 1 positive 1 because again, each standard deviation is, is equal to 10 points. If we go up 10 points from the mean, that places it as, at a score of 110. And we understand that to be equivalent to one standard deviation unit above the mean. And its z-score would be represented as positive 1. Number 3. For a distribution with a standard deviation equal to 20, Describe the location of each of the following z-scores in terms of its position relative to the mean. For example, z equals positive 1 is a location that is 20 points above the mean. So A says, let's consider first the fact that it's positive. So again, we're going to reference this location as above the mean. And then we're saying that it's um, a z-score of 2, which we interpret as 2 standard deviation units above the mean. So if each standard deviation unit is worth 20 points, 2 times 20 would indicate that this score is 40 points above the mean. So again, in the last example, we were asked to identify what the sign tells us and then what the numeric value indicates. And here we're seeing that applied. The positive value tells us it's above the mean. And then the 2 indicates how many standard deviation units it is from the mean. And in this case, so we have 2 standard deviation units above. Each standard deviation is worth 20 points, so we come up with 40 by taking 2 multiplied by 20. Let's look at the next one. We again show above, right, because it's a positive z-score. And we're saying that this particular score, its location is half a standard deviation unit above the mean. So half of 20 would indicate that this score is 10 points above the mean. Again, each standard deviation is worth 20 points, but this location is only half that distance. 
So half the distance of 20 would be 10. Next one, we see that it's a negative z-score. So instead of above, we're going to reference it as a value below. So it's one standard deviation unit above, below the mean. One, is, one standard deviation is equal to 20 points. So we would indicate that this score is 20 points below the mean. And then finally, another negative z-score indicating value a value below or the distance is less than the mean or from the mean. So if we think of um, 0.25 or a quarter, one quarter of one whole standard deviation unit, one quarter of 20, again, you can multiply 0.25 multiplied by 20. Okay, we should get five points. So again, what I'm, I'm indicating is this location is a quarter of one standard deviation unit. So a quarter of 20 would place us at five points below the mean. Again, the sign tells us you know, what side of the mean and then the numeric value indicates the distance. And if in B we said that um, half a standard deviation is 10 points, right? A quarter of that um, 20, should it should make sense that that's equal to 5 points below the mean. Again, these problems are just simply helping us understand how to describe the location of a score in relation to the mean of a distribution. Number five, for a population with mu equal to 40 and standard deviation equal to 11, find the z-scores for each of the following x values. Note, you probably will need to use a formula and a calculator to find these values. So we know that a z-score is equal to x minus mu divided by our standard deviation. So we're just going to use that equation and replace the variables for each of these examples. So z is equal to 45, which our x value. The mu is equal to 40, divide by 11. So in your calculators, enter 45 minus 40. 45 minus 40, divide by 11, and you should get a z-score of point. Four, five. if we round two digits right at the decimal. So in other words, a score of 45 is 0.45 of a standard deviation unit above the mean. Again, it shouldn't make sense that it's a positive z-score because the score of 45 is greater than the, the mean of 40. So it's a positive z-score of 0.45. If we took 0.45 and multiplied it by 11, we get approximately um, five points, again, working backwards. So 0.45 of 11 is five points. So again, thinking of the mean in the center equal to 40, and we added five points, or 0.45 of the 11, we would get a score of 45. Next one, z is equal to our score, which is 30, minus the mean of 40, and divide by 11. So again, in your calculators, 30 minus 40 divided by 11, we get a negative z-score of 0.91, if we were to round. Again, indicating that a score of 30 is almost one standard deviation unit below the mean. Again, reference the score of 30, Think of its relation to the, the, to the mean of 40, so it's less than, and it's 10 points less than. 11 points is one standard deviation unit, so it should make sense that we're close to one standard deviation unit because, again, um, we're saying 0.91 or 91% of 11, um, translating that into number of scores below the mean. Next one, we have a score of 52. So z is equal to 52 minus the mean of 40 divided by 11. Again, thinking about how, where that score is in relation to the mean, we should expect a positive z score. So we take 52, subtract 40, divide by 11, and we should get a score of 
positive, and I'm going to write positive here just to reiterate what we are doing here. Positive 1.09. And again, that should make sense that if we went up one standard deviation unit, I would place this at 51. And this score is a score of 52. So it's one standard deviation unit plus a little bit more. So again, I want you to think about the value that you're calculating makes sense as to what you are asked to do. In this case, calculate the z-scores, but also interpret them in terms of how many standard deviation units that score is from the mean. So a score of 52 is 1.09, so one whole standard deviation unit, which is equal to 11 points, plus 0 0.09 of the 11, which places us at a score of 52. Next one, z is equal to score 25 minus 40 divided by 11. Again, given the fact that this score is less than the mean, we should anticipate a negative z-score. So take 25, subtract 40, divide by 11, and we get a z-score equal to negative 1.36. Again, we're saying that it's one standard deviation unit below 40 plus 0.36 of one standard deviation unit, so a fraction of a st standard deviation unit. Next one, z is equal to our score, 41 minus 40 divided by 11. Again, given that we're just one point away, one standard deviation equals 11 points, we should expect a very small z value here because the distance from the mean, the score of 41, its distance from the mean of 40 is very minimal, very small. So in fact, if we take um, 41 minus 40, divide by 11, we get a z score equal to positive 0 0.09. Again, a small fraction of one standard deviation unit, one standard deviation unit in this distribution is equal to 11 points. We are simply one point above the mean, so we should anticipate a very small z-score as we calculated here, 0 0.09. Lastly, z is equal to score 38 minus 40 divided by 11. So in your calculators, 38 minus 40, again, we should expect a negative z-score because 38 is less than the mean of 40. Divide by 11, we get um, negative point, point 0.18. Okay, so again, the distance in terms of points, it's two points below the mean. One standard deviation is equal to 11. So it's a very small fraction in terms of the distance of one standard deviation unit. Okay, again, remember, what we're essentially doing is just relabeling scores. So even though this problem doesn't ask that we do this, it might be helpful for you to see what, what we've just done. So instead of referring to a score in terms of its points from the mean, how many points, we're going to standardize its distance. So we know in the center we have a score of 40. We know the standard deviation of this distribution is equal to 11. And then we have our scores of 41. And again, this won't be perfect given the limited space I have. 41, we have a score of 45 and 52 above the mean. Below the mean, we have scores of 38 and 30 and 25. Again, they're not proportionally listed here, but nonetheless, those are its raw score values. We know that if we convert any distribution into a z distribution from our reading, that the mean becomes zero. The mean becomes zero. And now we can list. Um, the values of each of these z-scores. So a score of 41 was point, point zero nine, zero nine standard deviation units above the mean. A score of 45 was point four five standard deviation units above the mean. 
a score of 52 was 1.09 standard deviation units above the mean. The score of 38 was negative, negative 0.18 standard deviation units below the mean, 30, negative 0.91, almost one whole standard deviation unit, and a score of 25 was negative 1.36. So again, all I've done is taken these x values and expressed them in a standardized fashion. How many standard deviation units is the score from the mean? And we, again, represent it as a portion of how many standard deviation units each standard deviation, how, excuse me, how many points each standard deviation unit is equal to. In this case, one standard deviation unit is equal to 11 points. So again, if we were to go up one standard deviation unit, 40 plus 11, right, place this right here around 50, not around, but exactly at 51, that would be one standard deviation unit. So again, it's just the process of relabeling these scores and expressing them in terms of their distance from the mean. Number seven, a population has a mean of 60 and, the, and a standard deviation of 12 points. For this population, find the z-score for each of the following x values. So similar to what we just did in the previous example, we're going to convert these x values into their z values. And in other words, relabel them, and indicate which indicates how many standard deviation units that particular score is from the mean, above or below. So z is equal to x minus mu divided by our standard deviation. So in the first case, z is equal to 69 minus 60 divided by 12. And so in your calculators, enter 69 minus 60 divided by 12, and you should get 0.75. So again, we're saying the score of 69 is 3 quarters of a standard deviation unit above the mean. So again, if we were to multiply 0 0.75 times 12, that gives us 9. So again, 3 quarters of one standard deviation unit in this distribution is equal to 9 points. If we add 9 points to 60, the mean, that places us at a score of 69. Okay, so again, just giving you some tools as to how to calculate um, the, the z-score, but more importantly, understand what we are calculating. How do we interpret this information? The next one, z is equal to 54 minus 60 divided by 12. And some of you may already see this um, in, in terms of the calculation. So if we take 54 and we subtract 60, again, it's a value below the mean, so it's going to be reported as negative z-score. And um, the difference is negative 6 divided by 12, we get a z-score of negative 0.5. So half a standard deviation unit. Again, that should make sense. If the center is equal to 60, the mean is in the center. If we take half of 12, that's 6 points. All right, so if we take 60 minus 6 points, that puts us at a score of 54. Next one, z is equal to 84 minus 60 divided by 12. So again, our calculator is 84 minus 60 divided by 12, and we get a z-score of 2, positive 2. So the difference between 84 and 60 is equal to 24 points. So 24 points is the same as two standard deviation units in this distribution because each standard deviation is equal to 12 points. So again, if we take 2 times 12, it's 24, and add that to 60, and we get a score of 84. And then again, it's a positive because 84 is larger than 60. Next one, z is equal to 48 minus 60 divided by 12. And so in our calculators, 48 minus 60 divided by 12 and we get a z-score equal to positive 1. Excuse me, that's not correct. Let me correct that. Negative 1. We have 
a score less than the mean. So it's, again, thinking of 60 as the center, we subtract one standard deviation unit. One standard deviation is equal to 12 points, so 60 minus 12 puts us at a score of 48. Next one. Z is equal to score 63 minus 60, so it's just three points above the mean, divide by 12. So we should expect a fraction of one standard deviation unit, a decimal. 63 minus 60 divide by 12, and we get 0.25 positive. So, oops, excuse me. So we have 0.25. One quarter of a standard deviation unit, one quarter of a standard deviation unit um, above the mean is the same as a score of 63. Finally, z is equal to score 45 minus 60 divided by 12. In our calculators, 45 minus 60 divided by 12, and we get a z score equal to. 1.25, negative 1.25. So this score of 45 is one whole standard deviation unit, 12 points, plus a quarter of a standard deviation unit below the mean. Again, all we've done here is convert an x value into a z-score, which enables us to express the location or distance from the mean using the standardized um, units of a standard deviation unit. Remember that standard deviation represents the average difference and deviation of scores in a distribution in relation to the mean of the distribution. So again, all we've done is essentially just relabeled these scores so that we understand them in terms of how many standard deviation units a particular score is from the mean. The sign tells us which side of the mean. The value tells us how many standard deviation units. And again, it could be a fraction of one standard deviation unit. Number seven, a population has a mean equal to 60 and a standard deviation equal to 12. For the same population, find the scores, the x value that corresponds to each of the following z scores. So opposite of what we have um, done in the two previous examples, here we're asked to identify the x value that corresponds to a certain location um, in a distribution. So the z-score is going to express how many standard deviation units above or below this particular score is, and we're going to use our equation x is equal to the mean, the mean plus the product of our standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. Um, to find out what the x value is equal to when we have our standard deviation and our mean, and we know its location expressed in standard deviation units. So our first one, we would indicate that x is equal to the mean of 60 plus our standard deviation, which is equal to 12 points, multiplied by the z-score. So the score that we're interested in is half a standard deviation unit above the mean. It's half a standard deviation unit above the mean. So if you take 12 multiplied by 0.5 or 12 divided by 2, right, it's half, um, we should get 6. So 6 added to 16, we get a score of 66. Again, just thinking um, about this in the opposite um, way that we were looking at z-scores. So if a z-score is 0.5, it's half of whatever standard deviation units have been identified for that distribution. In this case, it's 12, so half of 12 is 6. 6 plus the mean of 60, we get a score of 66. Similarly, the next one is x is equal to our mean, which is 60, plus the product of our standard deviation, 12, multiplied by our z-score, negative 0.25. So this score is a quarter a quarter of a standard deviation unit below the mean. Okay, so a quarter of standard deviation would equal three points. 60 minus three, 60 minus three gives us a score of 57. 57, so again, 
one quarter of a standard deviation unit below the mean is equivalent to a score of 57. Next one, x, let me try that again, x is equal to our mean, 60, plus the product of our standard deviation, 12, multiplied <clears throat> by one and a half. Again, so we're saying this score is one whole standard deviation unit plus a half a standard deviation unit above the mean. So we're going to take 12 multiplied by 1.5. That gives us 18, <clears throat> excuse me, plus 16. So we're talking about a score that's equal to 78. 78. So a score of 78 is one and half of a standard deviation unit above the mean. Next one, we have x is equal to the mean, 60, plus the product of our standard deviation, 12, multiplied by negative 0.5, negative 0.5. So again, we're talking about half a standard deviation unit from the mean. And um, so if we take 12, multiply it by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, negative 0.5 to be um, more precise, we get negative 6. So we're talking about finding the score that's half a standard deviation unit below the mean. So 60 minus 6, 60 minus 6 gives us a score of 54. So a score of 54 is half a standard deviation unit below the mean. Next one, x is equal to the mean plus our standard deviation multiplied by the z-score, 0.250. So now we're talking about a score that's well below the mean. It's two standard deviation units, right, 2 times 12 plus half of standard deviation units, so half of 12, subtracted from 60. So again, mathematically, we would enter this, the standard deviation, 12, times 2.5, negative, plus 60, so we're talking about a score that's equal to 30, score of 30. So a score of 30 is two and a half standard deviation units from the mean. All right, next one, we have x is equal to the mean, 60, plus our standard deviation multiplied by our z-score, 1.25. So we're looking for the x value that's one and a quarter standard deviation units above the mean. So 12 times 1.25 plus 60, we get a score of 75. So again, reading it backwards, the score of 75 is one and a quarter standard deviation units above the mean. Um, and again, the z-score is 1.25. Number nine, a sample has a mean equal to 25 and standard deviation equal to 5. For the sample, find the x value corresponding to each of the following z-scores. So the only difference is the notation. We're going to solve for x. x now is m, the mean, plus the product of our standard deviation, s, multiply by our z-score. So again, the only difference is the notation. Now we um, understand that we're working with a sample opposed to a population. So the first one, x is equal to our mean of 25 plus standard deviation, which is equal to 5, multiplied by the z-score. So we're saying 0.4, 40% of one standard deviation unit added to the mean. So 5 multiplied by 0.4 plus 25, we get a z-score equal to 27. Next one, x is equal to the mean of 25 plus our standard deviation is equal to 5 multiplied by the z-score, negative 0 0.80. So 0.8 of a standard deviation, standard deviation or 80% of standard deviation, so 5 multiplied by 0.8 negative is equal to 4. And so our z-score, because the, uh, excuse me, our x value, because the z-score is negative, we should understand that this score will be less than the mean of 25. So again, we enter 
25 times 0.8 negative plus 25, and we get a score of 21. Next one, x is equal to the mean, 25, plus the standard deviation, 5, multiplied by 1.20. So we're looking for a score that's 1, and then 20% of a standard deviation unit above the mean. Okay, so 1.2 multiplied by 5 added to 25, and we get a score of 31. Next one, x is equal to the mean, 25, plus standard deviation, 5, multiplied by our z-score, negative 0.60. So 60% of a standard deviation, or 0.6 of a standard deviation unit below the mean. Okay, so we have 5 multiplied by 0.6, 3, so 25 minus 3, we get a score of 22. All right, next one, x is equal to the mean 25 plus 5 times positive 2. So, so 5 times 2, 10 plus 25 gives us a, a x value of 35. So this is two standard deviation units above. Each standard deviation is equal to, worth five points, so that's 10 points above the mean of 25, which is equal to a score of 35. Finally, x is equal to the mean, 25, plus five multiplied by negative 1.40. So one standard deviation and 40% of a standard deviation unit below the mean. So 1.4 multiplied by five, um, or negative 1.4 multiplied by five, gives us seven, so seven points below the mean, we get a score of 18, a score of 18. <clears throat> Number 11, find the x value corresponding to z equal to 0.25 for each of the following distributions. So again, our equation is x is equal to the mean plus product of our standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. And here we see that um, the mean of all four distributions are identical, but the standard deviation um, essentially doubles. We go from 4 to 8, 8 to 16, 16 to 32. So when we get to distribution D, we're essentially working with a much flatter, diverse distribution. So um, let's keep in mind what that has, what effect that has on the value of an x score um, in relation to the mean. Okay, so we have the first one. If we're solving for x, x is equal to the mean of 40 plus the product of our standard deviation, which is in this case 4, multiplied by 0.25. So if we go a quarter of a standard deviation unit above the mean for this particular case and add that to 40, we get a score of 41. So in this distribution with standard deviation equal to four, um, a quarter above, a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean is the same as a score of 41, a score that's fairly close to the mean. Next one, x is equal to 40, the mean, plus the product of the standard deviation multiplied by, let me make that a little clearer, 8 multiplied by 0.25. So now the, the variability has increased, um, has doubled essentially. So what does that mean in terms of the value of x that now represents a quarter of a standard deviation unit above the mean? So 0.25 times 8 plus 4, 40, gives us a score of 42. So now, in this distribution that's more diverse, it has a larger standard deviation, a quarter of a standard deviation above the mean is now a score that's further from the mean, again, because of the variability or spread has increased. Next one, x is equal to the mean 40 plus our standard deviation of 16, it's doubled from the last one, multiplied by 0.25. So given that the variability has doubled from 8 to 16, now we want to identify the value of an x score that's a quarter of a standard deviation unit above the mean. 
So 0.25 multiplied by 16 plus 40, and we get a score of 44. So again, notice that in all of these, the mean is the same. That's a constant. The distance from the mean is the z-score, which is a quarter of a standard deviation unit. But what we're changing and seeing the effects of are the variation and variability. So we start with a very consistent distribution that has standard deviation equal to 4 to 8 and to 16. And now, whoops, um, I just noticed I wrote something wrong. Sorry about that. It's not 40, it's 44. And now we see that that location pushes the score out further, further from the mean when we have a dis distribution that's flatter, um, more inconsistent. And finally, x is equal to the mean of 40 plus one standard deviation unit, that's 32 points, multiplied by a quarter. 0.25 is the z-score equal to 0.25. So if we take a quarter of one standard deviation unit, in this case, that's equal to 8 points plus 40, we get a score of 48. So again, the purpose of this um, example is just to show you what it means um, when we have a distribution that has greater diversity or the scores are more spread out, the standard deviation is larger. So the location of these scores is all the same in terms of their z-scores, but what changes, right, the x value um, from 41, which is very close to the mean, to score 48 is a function of how spread out the original distribution is. Number 13, a score that is 9 points above the mean corresponds to a z-score of z equal to negative 0.5. And I just realized that that should not be a negative, so let me correct that um, just a second. Okay, so we, again, because it says above, we should see that a z-score of positive um, 1.0, so 1.5 points above the mean. What is the population standard deviation? Well, some of you may stare at this for quite a while and wonder how on earth are we going to figure this out, but um, what we can do is utilize the equations that we've been presented. Um, using, using a visual will also be helpful. So for example, what do we know visually? What can we interpret visually? We know we have a distribution with the mean. The mean is not given. We don't necessarily need it to figure out what the standard deviation is equal to. We are asked to consider a score that is 1.5 standard deviation units above the mean. <clears throat> so a score that has 1.5, that's um, one and a half standard deviation units above the mean. And we are also told that that's the equivalent of saying nine points, nine points above the mean. Okay, so drawing it out will help you better understand what is that we're trying to figure out. Um, let's now consider our, our equation for calculating z. z is equal to the score minus the mean divided by our standard deviation. Again, our objective here is to calculate or figure out what the standard deviation is equal to. Let, so let's move these variables around using simple algebra to isolate the standard deviation. So again, if I multiply by standard deviation here and here, it's going to cancel out here and here, and then get rid of the z-score, so divide by z, and what I have left is standard deviation is equal to x minus mu divided by z. Okay, so having um, done that gives us something to work with. Again, we're asked to figure out what the standard deviation is equal to. Now I have an equation that says standard deviation is equal to x minus mu divided by z. So the next step is to ask ourselves, um, what do we know and what can we replace? So standard deviation is equal to, we know the z-score, we're saying that we're working with a score that's 1.5 above the mean. And we need to figure this out. Again, we were not given the x value nor the mean of the distribution, but what they did give us was the difference, right? So um, we're saying that nine points above the mean, right? Nine points above the mean could be interpreted as here's mu in the center of the distribution and here's our x value. 
So from mu to x is equal to 9 points. So though we weren't given what mu is equal to, right, we don't know mu and they didn't give us x, they did tell us the difference between those two and that was equivalent to 9 points. So now if we take our mean difference um, between the x value and mu, we get 9, divide by 1.6, excuse me, 1.5. So 9 divided by 1.5, we get 6. And so now we've calculated and determined that one standard deviation unit in this distribution is equal to 6 points. So if we were to consider a score that's one and a half of these, so 6 and half of 6 is equal to 3, that's the same as 9 points, and that's the mean difference that was given. So this is how you should try to approach these problems. First, draw out the distribution in terms of what is given. Um, identify the equation that's going to help you solve for the missing variable. Again, in this case, we began with the z is equal to square minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Recognizing that what we needed was standard deviation, we simply move variables around to isolate that variable and then replace the values so that we could solve for the missing variable in this case, which is equal to standard deviation.